This is the second in a series of videos taking a look at how we complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as it's more commonly referred to, a NAS. Our aim with this video is to offer you a point of reference to help you integrate a NAS into your home network. And while Synology may offer many different models of devices, the same basic principles that we walk you through in this video can be applied to all Synology NAS devices. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you install Synology's Disk Station Manager and complete a basic setup which will integrate the NAS into your home network. As we've already familiarized ourselves with the NAS, fitted a hard drive and then connected it to our network, we are ready to switch the device on. When we switch on the NAS for the first time, the NAS will run through a series of checks that will take around two minutes to complete. First, it confirms the number of hard drives that have been installed into the unit. For each hard drive installed, an indicator light will become illuminated. If the indicator light for the corresponding hard drive does not become illuminated, switch off the NAS and double check that the hard drive is compatible with the NAS and then that the hard drive has been correctly seated into the hard drive bay. In our example, as we only have one hard drive installed, only the disk 1 indicator light becomes illuminated. The integrity of the hard drive is now checked, and the NAS determines if the drive has an operating system already installed on it. If you purchased your NAS with a pre-installed hard drive, the NAS will beep and the status light will become green. This is because the operating system was pre-installed at the factory. As we purchased a driveless NAS and then fitted our own blank hard drive to that NAS, our NAS beeped and the status light began to flash orange. This indicates that we now need to install the operating system for the NAS. To do this, we need to use a computer already connected to our home network. If we open a web browser and at the address bar type find.synology.com, when we press enter on the keyboard, the Synology Web Assistant will load. The Web Assistant is specifically designed to help you find any Synology devices connected to your home network and then connect to them. In our example, you can see that we have the unconfigured NAS and a Synology wireless router that make up our home network. Within Web Assistant, we can see the model name of a device, its IP address, its MAC address, and its current status. As you can see here, the status of our NAS is not installed. Let's connect to the NAS. At the welcome screen, we're shown an image of the NAS we're going to be working on, a setup button, and the same device information that we saw on the previous screen. Let's select Setup. As the hard drive in our NAS is blank, we need to first install Disk Station Manager. Disk Station Manager is the operating system that runs on all Synology NAS devices. When we install the DSM, it will be the latest version of the operating system. There is also an option to complete a manual install. This will allow you to install an older version of DSM. We're going to select Install Now. However, before we can proceed, we are first presented with a warning message informing us that this process will delete all data from the hard drive. In order to proceed, we have to check the tick box to confirm that we understand that any data on the hard drive will be removed. When we select OK, the hard drive in our NAS will be first partitioned and then formatted. A copy of the DSM operating system is then downloaded from the internet and installed onto the hard drive. Finally, the NAS is restarted. The whole process will take roughly 20 to 30 minutes depending on your broadband speeds. 
When your nurse is ready, it will beep and the status light will turn green. For anyone that has purchased their NAS pre-configured with a hard drive, we have now caught up to the same point as you will be in after switching on your NAS for the first time. From within the web browser, you can see that we're asked to create an administrator's account. First, we need to give the server a name. You can see an information icon next to the server name label. When we hover over the information icon, we're given some additional information to help us decide what to name our server. An obvious choice would be to call the server simply server. But for this example, we decided to use the model name of the NAS as the server name. Next, we need to create a username for our administrator's account. To avoid future confusion, we're going to stick with the name administrator. We now need to select a password for the administrator's account. As our NAS has the potential to be accessible to the whole of the internet, we need to make sure that we use a strong password. This means that the password should be over eight characters in length, use upper and lowercase letters, use some numbers, and at least use one symbol, for example, an exclamation mark. As you type your password, you will see how strong the password is. Once you've created your password, note it down and keep it in a safe place. You can see that there is an option to share the network location of your disk station with Synology. This will make it easier for you to reach your NAS on your home network. For the moment, we will be leaving this setting enabled. Let's select Next. With the administrator's account now created, we can move on to the next stage. As a general rule, we like to manually manage the installs of updates on all of our network devices. While it's unusual, it's not impossible for an update to cause a device to stop functioning correctly. By controlling if or when an update is installed on a device, we can hopefully avoid any unwanted surprises. This is not to say that you should ever knowingly avoid installing an update, as using an older version of DSM could leave your data susceptible to hackers. Instead, we want to delay the installation of an update to give Synology time to correct that update if the update has been found to be not functioning correctly. It is for this reason that we use the option Download DSM Updates and install them manually. As these settings can be adjusted, we will be looking at how to update DSM in more depth in a future video. The Run Smart Tests and Enable Bad Sector Warning options we will be leaving enabled as these options could give us prior warning to a hard drive failure. A bad sector is a part of the hard drive that is either inaccessible or unwritable due to damage to the surface of that disk. While a small number of bad sectors on an older hard drive should be of no concern, if the number of bad sectors starts to dramatically increase, that is usually an indicator that the drive is starting to fail. When we select Next, we're asked to set up Quick Connect. Quick Connect is a simple way to allow us to remotely connect to our NAS from outside our home network. As we want to look at Quick Connect in more depth, we will be covering this option in a later video. For now, we will simply select Skip this step. You can see that we are warned that we will have to manually set up port forwarding to set up remote access. We're going to select Yes. Finally, we're asked if we want to install some packages that Synology recommend. Synology call applications that add functionality to your NAS packages as there is a chance that we may not want to use all of the packages offered here, we're going to skip this step. However, we will be looking at each of these packages individually in future videos. 
Finally, we are ready to take a tour of the DSM. But before we do, let's remove the tick that will send statistical information to Synology. When we select Go, the Disk Station Manager will open for the first time, and a short demonstration is run identifying key elements of the DSM. As the DSM does not become active until after we've completed the tour, we're going to click through the tips. In the next video in this series, we will be taking a more in-depth look at the main elements that make up the interface of the DSM. So for now, we will be disabling the function that automatically launches the DSM help every time we log in. So to recap, we've looked at how you connect to your NAS via a web browser. We've installed and configured the DSM operating system to our NAS. We then ran through the basic setup of the NAS, and we are currently logged into the administrator's account where we can see the DisStation Manager interface.